We begin our conversation with the incumbent tonight, the Republican Insurance Commissioner Mike Causey. Commissioner Causey, thanks for coming in for our, our discussion about your policy and, and what you have in store for a second term. Thank you, Kelly. It's a pleasure to be with you. Well, tell us about yourself. Uh, those who voted for you in 2016 are likely still here, but so many more voters have come into this state. Who's Mike Causey? I'm a farm boy from Guilford County. I was born and raised on a produce farm in southeast Guilford County in the Alamance community of Guilford County, where I still live today. I live in the same house that my great granddaddy, my granddaddy, my daddy lived in. It was built in 1907 as a hunting lodge by the chairman of Remington Arms. My great grandfather worked for Mr. Dodge and trained his bird dogs and managed the farm. So uh, I grew up around hunting and bird dogs and guns and, and farming. Now, as a grown up though, you, I, I see that you have decades of experience in the insurance industry. You are the labor, uh, you are the insurance commissioner. Tell us more about your experience in that field. That's right. I, I went to college uh, out of high school to Wake Tech. I studied civil engineering technology, have an associate's degree in that. Uh, was in the Army, uh, served overseas, military police, and U.S. Army band. I came back home, uh, worked as a field engineer, and I went back to college at UNC Charlotte. And while I was at UNC Charlotte, I got recruited into the insurance business. So uh, I began my career in Charlotte uh, with uh, MetLife, Metropolitan Life mm -hmm. Insurance Company, and uh, worked for a couple of different companies. But spent 25 years in mostly management in the insurance industry. And I will say this, Kelly, I'm the first non-attorney insurance commissioner in the history of North Carolina. So uh, nothing against my attorney friends, but I believe that's a plus for North Carolina to have somebody that has insurance experience. How has the insurance industry and insurance needs for North Carolinians changed in that 25 to 30 years that you've been you know, working in insurance? Well, one thing stayed the same is the insurance is all about risk and uh, people need to have adequate insurance on their cars, homes, and their life and health to, to make sure they're, they don't have to pay for it out of pocket. Uh, you mentioned earlier about a rematch. This is actually the third time uh, that I've, I've run against my opponent. First, I ran against him in 2012. Uh, he... He edged me out in 2012. He beat me, and I edged him out in 2016. So uh, we're in another close race, and uh, I need all the help I can get, Kelly. It's like Ali Frazier. The, round, the rounds are going by here. But look, <laughs> it's, it's always been a close race, Mr. Causey. Uh, how do you size up? If you're a voter, and I'm looking at two people, there's an R and a D, a Republican and a Democrat, and I may be one or the other of these parties. Uh, why should voters look at the position and not necessarily the political party? Or is political party affiliation a good barometer of how you would run the Department of Insurance? No, I, th I think you're going to find all across the United States, uh, most insurance commissioners are appointed by the governors and most are nonpartisan. I believe there's 35 insurance commissioners in the United States that are actually uh, unaffiliated or nonpartisan. So uh, partisan politics does not come into play when, when you're regulating or governing. Uh, we all have a great relationship on the Council of State, uh, but it does come into play when you're running for office. Your platform calls for increasing competition within the insurance industry on behalf of North Carolinians. What do you mean by that and, and how do you achieve that? Well, I think competition is what we need. The more companies we have competing for business, the better off consumers are. I've worked really hard over the past four years to bring more health insurance companies to North Carolina, and we've done that. I'd like to see more health insurance companies writing individual health insurance coverage, but we have some of the lowest rates in the nation. We have we're consistently in the top 10 lowest in automobile insurance rates, and we have some of the lowest homeowners rates in the southeast. Uh, we're never going to be the lowest because of our coastline, but I have worked really hard for consumers to fight back the rate increases that's been proposed 
by the North Carolina Rate Bureau, and that's the body that does set the rates in this state. Most people understand if they pay insurance, a hurricane hits, rates are going to go up to, to, to recover, help the insurance industry recover. Oftentimes, the commissioner of insurance will fight against a rate increase here and there as they come up. It makes headlines every time. So how do you know what's a sensible increase on behalf of the industry versus customers need protection and you fight that increase proposal? Well, I'll say this. I fought every proposed increase because I it looked to me like those proposals were out of line. What we do is we get our actuaries and we hire consultants and we check the numbers that are presented to us. And it's always important that we have a healthy insurance climate. So you have to look at what the industry is requesting to see what is justified and what is not justified. So uh, I'll give you an example. When I took office, there were rate increases on my desk that the previous administration had given us, and we pushed back really hard. I think the rate bureau was looking to raise coastal homeowners' rates in some counties up to 70%. So we fought that back. We found the data was not correct, and later that year, in 2017, we got another rate request, and it was an average of... Uh, 20 to 30 percent is what they were looking for, uh, and we negotiated a settlement, which is, I have a choice of saying yes or no. The state statutes say I have to set a court date, which we did, but prior to the court date, you can negotiate if the insurance industry would like to do that, and so we negotiated a statewide settlement of less than 5%. It was 4.7 average statewide. So that's the type of thing that I've done to help consumers as much as possible while keeping the insurance industry healthy. I was going to ask you, what is your relationship with agents down at that field level all the way up to the, uh, the corporate leaders, the people you have to recruit to bring policies into the state? We have a good working relationship with the field force, with the agents across North Carolina, and we have a really good working relationship with the in insurance uh, executives and owners. But we have fought back when we needed to. I, I have uh, held the bu bureaucrats accountable. Uh, I've, I've took an oath uh, to protect and defend the Constitution of North Carolina and the United States, and I've, I've done that. You know, fire insurance is easy. Property owners, car insurance, we all understand that. How has coronavirus affected the industry's thinking on how to write or issue liability insurance, health insurance, et cetera? Coronavirus has had a big impact on the insurance industry. When we first heard about it, uh, the end of January, 1st of February, uh, nobody really knew it, it was all of these uh, alarm bells going off that it might be similar to the Spanish flu of 1918, but once it became apparent uh, how rapidly this virus was being spread, the state did take action, and uh, I got on the phone early on and asked the health insurance industry to work with the medical providers in getting telehealth approved and we got that done quickly. And I, I thank the health insurance industry and the medical providers for doing that. Would, it, would expansion of telehealth, does that lower cost or just hold the cost because of so much demand being placed on the health care industry and the insurance industry through yeah. testing, through diagnosis? Well, I, I think it helps overall. But the, the main thing was pe the people were afraid to go to a doctor. And some of the doctors were trying to figure out how they could meet with patients uh, without doing this face-to-face. -face. And so the telehealth has been a blessing for many families. Uh, I also issued a mandate in March that required insurance companies to continue coverage. They couldn't cancel people's policies for non-payment if they were laid off uh, and had financial hardships due to coronavirus. The, the Insurance Commissioner does so much more than, than fight for and against insurance rates. I want to ask you, it's a long, long-standing issue, our volunteer firefighters and firefighters in general. I know out in the rural areas, volunteer fire departments have been struggling. Uh, it, that predates you in office. 
how how right. are our volunteers out there and first responders, especially outside these cities? Well, 74 percent of our firefighters across the United States are volunteer firefighters. Now, in North Carolina, it's close to 70 percent. It, it drops a little bit each year. It's a little under 70 percent now. But many of our volunteer fire departments are struggling to recruit volunteers and to retain volunteers. And we've been doing everything possible through our Office of State Fire Marshal to help in that recruiting effort. I just did a uh, some public service announcements for recruiting for the Elkin Fire Department uh, not long ago. So uh, this is something I've been proactive in. I've been out every week since I got elected. I've been out in fire departments. I visited all 100 counties within the first two years of being elected in 2017. I've been pushing to make sure we get cancer coverage because firefighters get cancer when they uh, go into these fires and, and through some of the uh, equipment and clothing articles they wear. So we've been working hard to get that covered. And I've, uh, we do matching grants through the Department of Insurance. Was and, good, I was going to ask you, how do you make it, how do you make a volunteer position? I know they make a small amount of money, a stipend, but how do you make that volunteer work uh, more more appealing to rural people because they are risking their lives every time there's a 911 call. Well, some of the departments are, are given uh, uh, stipends, are given certain dollar amounts for each call that the firefighter makes. Uh, on our matching grant program, that helps uh, to get better safety equipment. We gave out eight and a half million dollars this year on the matching grants. Uh, I went to Blue Cross and Blue Shield early in 2020, and I'm happy to report that, that Blue Cross stepped up and they donated over $2 million to our community colleges to help pay for firefighter uh, books and tuition and, and training and so, to things they would ordinarily have to pay out of pocket. And they also uh, gave $500,000 that were outright grant money that we gave to the 100 smallest, most needy fire departments in the state. Commissioner Mike Causey, thank you so much for this conversation, for introducing yourself to the new voters in North Carolina. Always good to see you. Thank you, Kelly.